I have with me today Greg Manorino. We're going to be talking about the deal that has been struck between the White House and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. We're going to talk about where are the stock market indexes going? Are we going to lose money? Are we going to gain money? I also want to talk about money being clawed back from the IRS, the, uh, the banking crisis, and where Greg thinks we are going with interest rates. Greg, thank you so much for being on today's show. I'm very happy to be here with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So as you know, uh, the media is saying that President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, they've struck a deal, this last minute uh, 11th hour deal that's going to save the country, save Social Security, save Medicare and Medicaid. <laughs> Uh, nobody likes this. This is a lose-lose situation that does reduce the budget by about $2 trillion. Republicans say this is amazing. Democrats say this is the worst thing that's ever happened. The Congressional Budget Office says this is the biggest reduction in federal spending ever. What are your thoughts on this deal? Is it going to pass the Senate? Uh, give, give us your thoughts on it. Well, first of all, I think we should start off with this. Uh, there is what this thing does make certain is that we're going to have more debt in another year or two than we have right now. That's really what the bottom line is here. And it's being sold, as you said, perfectly to the people like it's the greatest thing in the history of the world. What else would you expect in this kind of an environment here? Uh, you know, it's all a twisting of the mind, getting people to think one thing when the polar opposite is actually happening. It's nothing new. This is what they've always done here. But that's that's a fact. The fact of the matter is the debt is going to expand, is not going to contract from here. Uh, and that's just the mechanism here. Um, and however they want to twist it, they can't. They can't stop that fact. So that that's the truth here. And and in my view, all it is again is a continuing episode of for, you know pulling cash into the now from the future. That's all it is. And because the debt must expand, they can't tell people that it, that it can never stop. Um, that's the nature of the beast, the nature of the debt-based economic model. It can't stop. So once people get that through their heads, that there's no way to ever prevent. Uh, us from borrowing more, pulling more cash into the now, the better off everyone's going to be. Um, and that means it makes life simple, I think, for people like us and people that follow our work, realizing that they, they got to be on the opposite side of this trade. This 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 debt expansion cycle, that's what this is. We've never seen anything like this in the history of the world since the last meltdown is not going to stop until it does. And when it does, again, um, I'm going to go back to what I've been telling people forever now, is there is a meltdown in the debt market. The debt market is a time bomb. It's ticking louder. It's ticking faster. And, you know, central banks are in here since the last meltdown, collectively suppressing rates um, and, and destroying the value of their currency. And we're all paying for it. And there's going to be a major price to pay down the line. How? Via some other crisis. You know, that's how we exist these days. From crisis to crisis to crisis. And what does each crisis demand? What's the one common factor? Is they all demand more cash so they can fix the crisis. It's, it's astonishing to me. But, you know, look, people are waking up. People that follow your work, people that follow my work, they get it. I know they get it. Unfortunately, we are the minority. And uh, I wish people would would take talks like this, uh, interviews like this, and share them as far and wide as they possibly can to let people hear the truth. That's it. Yeah. So do you, do you think the government is just addicted to spending or are they just too afraid of not being reelected so they just won't audit the budget and remove all the wasteful spending? Look, the bottom line is, I don't think we have a single representative here. We, we have no representation anymore in this country. This has become some other kind of entity yet to be defined. Um, and all this is here is our, our politicians working for the central banks. The central banks are essentially the government. They control the economy. They control the markets. They control the financial system. They control the flow of information, everything. Central banks are the one world government we have all been warned about forever here. And without a revolution in this country, and I mean a full-blown revolt around the world, we're going to lose as we continue to live under the rule of these 
institutions here um, who control it all. Unfortunately, you see, we, we don't have a single politician that will tell us the truth, that we must continue to borrow. We have to keep pulling cash into the now, not just at, at, at a static pace. It must be pulled in in greater and greater amounts just to maintain where we are. It has to expand exponentially. It has, has to do that. Otherwise, we turn it into Mad Max. This debt-based economic model that we have is, the, is a curse upon the earth. Um, and it gives, again, central banks control over our very lives, unfortunately. And without that revolution I just spoke about, we're done. Um, unfortunately, we're going down that pathway. We don't have anyone that's gonna that has the guts to to uh, to tell us what's actually going on, except for people like you and me and people that follow our work. They get it, believe me. I know they do. But we got to get more people to hear this stuff. Other than that, we're, we're just done. What are they doing? They're creating slaves to the system. They're making people more dependent on it. Because I sincerely believe we are moving into a new system here. This one's currently dying. Uh, the debt expansion cycle is kind of burning itself out. What's the first stage of this? The first stage to know that this is burning out is soaring inflation here. They're consolidating the system. The banking system is coming apart. This is no accident here. Um, they got to consolidate power. They have to, again, create dependency on the system. Once they do this and once they really have a lock on it, which they do already, they're going to introduce a new system. The new system, all about control, 100% fiat, 100% digital. They're going to track everything we do down to the thousandth of a cent here. Um, that's where we're going. They're going after more of our freedoms and more of our liberties. And unfortunately, most people are just going to say, fine, they're just going to deal with it. Because again, why? They become dependent on the system. There are very few people like you and me and people that listen to our work that are kind of out of the box thinkers that understand what's going on, that can see it. Most people have no idea. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, enslaving us through debt and uh, owning our money and our time, <laughs> Uh, part of a year ago, the the Democrats passed this eighty billion dollar boost to the IRS. They wanted to hire tens of thousands of agents, some of them with uh, armed, you know, like guns on their hip. I mean, it, there was aggressive uh, employment details on the internet. Uh, now, within this bill. Republicans have said, no, we are clawing back a significant portion of that money. Do you think this is a win for uh, the middle class and lower income earners who are typically targeted by the IRS? Or is this just another facade? I think it's another facade. Again, look, what do they, what do, they do? How do they keep stringing people along the supposed two party system that we have? Um, they give people even the slightest bit of hope that something is gonna change for the better. Something is gonna help them with their life. And then people just submit more and more to the current system. Um, I, don't, I don't believe that anything they're gonna put forward here is gonna help anyone from the middle class. I think this is an extermination. I think this is elimination, an elimination on a global scale. We're going back into a feudal system. Uh, extreme haves, extreme have nots, more concentration of wealth, more concentration of power, as again, the middle rung gets forced to the lower rung of society. Again, it's part of the game. By getting prior members of the middle class into the lower rung, they become more again dependent on the system, slaves to the system. Then you can do anything you want with them. They're easy to control. That's really what this comes down to for me is control. They're, they have been eliminating people from the middle class for, for many, many years. It's really getting going now here, unfortunately. And, um, and that tells me that we're probably very close to the end game. The end game being a major crisis to end the current system here. They already have the scapegoat, the wars and all, whatever else they want to do. And then they're going to introduce their new system to the people. But I can't imagine whatever they're going to claw back here is going to be of any great help to anyone. Uh, and, and even the sums of money that they're talking about, it's, it's nothing uh, in the grand scheme of things here. When we're sending billions, tens of billions of over, over to Ukraine and everywhere else. You know, it's just, you know, we, we have enough money for everything else except for the people here. It's yeah, um, yeah. it's astonishing. But again, where where's the outrage? Where's the uproar? I don't know where it is. Uh, I'll tell you where it is. It's in France. And yeah. the, the, yes. the news 
is doing everything they can to suppress the riots in France. People are burning buildings. They're marching in the streets. They're protesting in front of their government. They're calling their leaders out over raising retirement by, I think, two years. I know. Losing their minds. And you know what? The elites and those that control the media don't want America to see that people are revolting, that they are saying we have had enough with governments manipulating our money, manipulating our currency, stealing from us. Uh, taking from those that have to give the, to to those that aren't doing anything uh, to to push forward a good healthy society. So, do you think that uh, you know part of what makes America great is the fact that there is a middle class? So, do you think the central bank knows that they systematically have to take out the the middle class and remove the American dream? Is that is that part of the process of enslaving us? Yeah, I think that is part of the process here. They want to keep that pressure on. They've been lying to us month after month after month about how they're in some kind of a battle to fight inflation. And they've been raising rates. And by raising rates, oh, we're definitely going to see inflation go down. No, we've seen nothing of the sort. We've seen inflation go higher and higher. What they're doing here, the truth the, 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 the truth behind, obviously, these, these rate hikes here has nothing Nothing at all to do with stopping or slowing inflation. It's to, it's cutting off the availability of credit, especially to small businesses who need it the most. So again, it's the corporate agenda. They're fulfilling the corporate agenda. These ma major corporations, they can deal with pretty much anything thrown at them. They have a line to uh, a main line to to the Federal Reserve. They're going to get all the support that they need here, but the small businesses not so much. So they're going to go away. So these big corporate entities can get even larger as they consolidate the banking system and everything else as they go along. The middle class is done. It's it's something that's an elimination that's been going on for quite a long time. It's accelerating. And, and again, they're setting it up. They've set it up. This whole thing is a farce on an unprecedented scale with regard to inflation and the, the, how, how they're selling this to the people via the mainstream. Oh, they're in the fight of their lives, not fighting anything. They're going to continue to inflate. You want proof? The people need proof of it? The debt's going to expand. That's what this deal guarantees is we're going to get more debt moving forward. More debt, more debt slavery, more dependence on the system. And then, of course, maybe that little inkling of hope. Oh, we're going to claw back a little money. It's going to make your life a little bit better. How about there's no way that's happening? They're going to keep the pressure on until they're finished and they're not done yet. Yeah. Okay. So uh, during the, the horrible lockdowns that we were all forced to live through, uh, most of it has now come out that it did almost nothing to help us. It just ruined families and, and businesses and children. Um, but during that time, everybody noticed that Walmart, Home Depot, uh, the big box stores, they were all allowed to stay open. Uh, mm -hmm. they were all allowed to have credit continue to flow towards them. Uh, and these small businesses were shut down or forced to pay employees with money that they didn't have. Uh, landlords allowed to let people live in houses they still owed mortgages on. So this drying up of credit that you just mentioned to small businesses, is that another way? Is that just another lockdown? where they're locking them out of the credit so that the, the, these small businesses will dry up and go away and they can continue to control the apples and the Walmarts and the targets uh, and the Budweiser's and the, you know, everybody that depends on the government uh, you know, these big corporations is that, is that part of the end game? Absolutely. That's part of the end game. I'm so happy that you brought this up because that's exactly what did happen. How exactly how you uh, outlined it? It's an it's a crazy thing. Where where are people? Why aren't they up in arms? This is exactly what did happen then, and this is what's happening now, just in another way by 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 raising rates, cutting the availability of credit to small businesses that needed the consumer themselves. People today are tapping into their 401ks and, and, and retirement plans more so than they ever have in history. That's something else that's not making the mainstream, but that's a fact. People cannot survive in this environment. Um, and they're making sure they keep that pressure on. It's not going to stop until maybe we turn into France and this thing expands around the world. But people in the United States, they just seem to be 
so they, they they lost their backbone. They've lost their spine, whatever it might be. They just they they I don't know what they've become. They 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 are they've lost a big part of what it means to govern themselves. They're not governing themselves. They're putting all of their faith in uh, politicians who are doing nothing but destroy them. Period. And then they sit back and they just take us like a smack across the face. Thank you. May I have another one? Um, people complain about it. I hear everyone complaining about, it. oh, I can't do this. You're watching the price of food and energy and everything else. And they just sit back and think it's all going to get better. It ain't. There's no way this is going to get better. Um, and I was telling people this morning, in, my, in fact, my video, that I, I do two a day. The one in the morning was prepare for a worst case scenario because that's where we're going. This whole thing is going to end in a worst case scenario for the middle class, which is going away again, like I said here, and another crisis is coming. And it's a, it's a guarantee because that's how we function. Just be ready for it mentally, spiritually, physically, um, you know, get with like-minded people and understand what's happening to you and, and, and just, just be ready for it. That's all I have to say. For the average uh, worker, you know, they're working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, um, putting in time, earning money, uh, being taxed, spending that to, to raise a family. The average person, do you think it's better for them to focus on expanding their 401k and IRA and asset base? Or would it be wiser for the average person, again, just the average person, to focus on eliminating debt and controlling the the use of their money to avoid all of this wasteful interest going out the door to to the benefit of these massive banks. Uh, well, first of all, they got to get themselves out of debt. I wrote a whole piece, a paper on this, um, how to get debt free. It's 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 a hundred percent free to everyone who wants it. Um, I did a video on this. It's available on my website. How to, I break it down step by step, how to renegotiate your debt, unsecured debt, which which all the major institutions do all the time. But uh, when when people are told are taught how to do it again, remember, you remember those commercials? If you have ten thousand dollars or more in credit card debt, well, anyone could do that. You don't have to pay an institution to do it. I broke it down step by step. So get yourself out of debt. Absolutely. One hundred percent. With regard to investing in this market here. Um, it does seem to be unstoppable at this point, but it's going to stop. It's going to change. There's just no doubt about it. Central banks are going to continue to suppress rates. What is it? What does suppressing rates do? When you have an, uh, an environment where central banks are getting into the market and buying the debt that keeps the, the rates suppressed, when that happens, it opens up a doorway for cash to make its way into risk assets or into the stock market. And it, it artificially inflates. It creates a massive bubble. As, as a matter of fact, not only does suppressing rates create a stock market bubble it, it creates a real estate bubble it creates malinvestment it meaning cash is comes out of things which should be going into and is going into things that has no business going into i mean the disconnect between the economy which is in free fall and the market just keeps getting wider and wider and i've i've shown people this exactly for a decade i said this is what's going to happen market economy is going to get wider and wider but at one point this gap is going to fill in fact, it's going to overcorrect. We're going to get what's going to end up happening is very simple, very, very, very simple. Dead market meltdown. The dead market, what people don't understand, is the largest aspect of this market by exponents. Everything derives value from action in the debt market. That's all I look at. I look at what the 10-year yield is doing. I look at what the relative strength of the dollar is doing. In fact, I have a little a neat little equation. Uh, it's called it's called the Manorino Market Risk Indicator. It's right on my website, traderschoice.net right at the top of the second page. It basically measures market risk in real time. We are now in a high risk zone. When we started, when the MRI came out, it was it was in a low risk zone. So this whole thing is gonna come down. It's just a matter of when and what crisis they're gonna throw at us. So knowing that, you know, that look, we just got a warning from, I think it was JP Morgan, telling people to limit their exposure to the stock market and gain exposure to commodities, gold, the number one, and crude oil as well. Now, energy, in my view, it's a no-brainer. Commodities, no-brainer. In the future, these are going up. They're going up. These are real things. They're tangible. Um, my favorite assets in the world are right here. That's gold and silver. Um, silver, my favorite of all, all time. I got it all over my freaking desk. <laughs> I play with it. My, my fans know sometimes I kiss it. Here, look here. I love this stuff. 
I think it's the most undivided asset in the world. How do I gauge that? I just look at the Dow gold ratio, gold silver ratio, and you can see, I, I really believe that and telling people forever that silver is my favorite asset of all time. So what I would tell you, see people is, look, if you have a few extra dollars laying around, convert that fiat currency, which what are central banks doing? They're in a race to the bottom. They're trying to suck the purchasing power of their currencies out. Who can do it faster? Yes, the dollar remains the prettiest bell at the ball, but still uh, on an absolute basis, uh, the dollar is dying. I mean, that's what why we're seeing inflation here. They're killing Central banks are killing their own currency. So get out of it. Convert it into hard assets. Again, silver. Uh, do people, do your own research on this. But to me, it's where people need to be. Commodities as well. All in aggregate. They're going higher. They're going much, much higher. All right. Final question. I really appreciate you coming on our show today. Uh, do you think the Federal Reserve is going to increase rates or take a pause? I don't think they're ready to lower them. But where do you think Jerome Powell's head's at? Pause. We're going to get a pause. There's no doubt about it. Um, I, I, if I'm wrong, I won't believe it. I've been, I've been calling what the Fed would do for over a decade. I've been wrong three times, three in over 10 years. So I'm going to say we're going to get a pause here, probably in a longer pause than people think. I don't believe we're getting a, a, a cut here anytime soon. Again, they got to keep the pressure on. They got to keep, and, and that's what this is all about, keeping pressure more and, and increasing the pressure on the middle class. Only way to do that is to, again, limit the availability of credit to people. Uh, they're not going to cut. They're gonna, if anything, they're going to stay static for a while. And depending on what the data shows, you know, because the Fed's data dependent, of course, uh, we'll see what they do moving forward. But we're going to we're going to get a pause um, in, in my view. Great. Well, thank you, Greg, for coming on. This has been Greg Manorino letting us know what's going on in the world, the economy, uh, with the banks. Where can people get more information about you if they want to continue to learn more? Just go to my website, traderschoice.net, my YouTube blog. I'm pretty easy to find. Okay, great. Well, thank you again for coming on.